Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Today we will have a look at the netcode of the division and that's only possible thanks to the support of my patrons over at patreon.com. The reason why I could not have done this video without their support is that it's quite expensive to make these videos. That starts at the cost of the game because I need not one but two copies for my tests. So in the past I've tried to borrow games from other people to get around these costs. But that meant that I only had access to the game for a limited amount of time and inside timeframes that I had to coordinate with these people, which made the testing process extremely stressful. So in some cases I couldn't spend as much time with the game as I would have liked to and I felt that this harmed the quality of my tests because I had to do them under pressure. But all my videos are monetized on YouTube, so why do I need Patreon to finance my tests? Well, when we take a look at the Lex Showdown video where I tested Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat and Skullgirls, then this video has about 45,000 views right now. However, the production of that video did cost me 124 euros, which means that the video would have to get something around 150,000 views just to earn the money back that I spent on its production. So YouTube's ad revenue is obviously not able to finance the tests I do and that is why I depend on your support over at Patreon as this is what ensures that I can continue to test new games close after their release when that kind of information is still useful. Now before we take a look at the test results from the division we need to talk about a few basics that are required to understand these results. If you've watched any of my previous netcode analysis videos and feel that you know what latency, tick and update rates are, then you can use the annotation link in the top right to skip that part of the video. So when you play online then your game and the server obviously need to exchange data. When your game sends a data packet to the server then this packet needs some time to reach that server. How long it needs depends on how far away you live from that server and if you use a copper or fiber internet connection. The travel time of the data is not affected by your upload and download bandwidth. So don't get confused when people talk about internet speeds because that always refers to how long a download or upload takes to finish, which is mostly affected by your bandwidth. The travel time of your data is one of the most important factors for online gaming. Because if it takes your data very long to reach its destination then it's outdated at the moment it arrives. This is now where the term ping comes into play. If your client tries to ping the server then it sends an ICMP echo request, which needs some time to reach the server. The server then sends an ICMP echo reply back to your client, which again needs some time to reach you. And your ping to that server is then the round trip time of that whole process. So the higher your ping the more you lag, because the data is no longer up to date when it reaches its destination. Then we have the update rates, which is how frequently the clients and servers send data. Some games use the same rate in both directions, others use different rates for the client and the server updates. The more frequently these updates are sent, the more data the game has to work with and this means that the game becomes more fluid. It also affects your lag because it does make a big difference if you receive 10 updates per second or 60 updates per second. This incoming data then needs to get processed, the physics and bullets need to get simulated and then the game has to send the results. How frequently this is done is defined by the simulation rate or tick rate of the game. And again, the more simulations the game runs per second, the better the game feels, because it processes new data earlier and it has more data to work with because higher tick rates allow for higher update rates, which means less lag. Now where are those multiplayer servers coming from? One solution is that you pay hosters to set up dedicated servers for your games in their data centers to which your players then connect to. This means that your game server is running on powerful hardware and has enough bandwidth to handle all those players who connect to it. The downside is that if you don't have a game that builds around the idea of the community running these servers, then the publisher or game studio has to pay for them and they are quite expensive. The other approach is that you simply use the PC or console of one of the players to host the game, which means that he becomes the server. With that solution the game studio does not have to pay for these expensive dedicated servers, which have to be available in many different regions. The downside is that the player who is also the server gets an advantage because he has zero lag, which means that he will see you before you see him and he can fire at you before you can fire at him. You also face the problem that all players have to connect to this host through his consumer grade internet connection when the worst case is also using Wi-Fi locally. This frequently results in a lot of lag, jittering player movement and unreliable hit registration. But the most frustrating aspect of such a client to client connection is that if your host disappears, then the game has to choose another player to host the match, 
which means that the whole game pauses for several seconds until it finished to migrate to another host. So while dedicated servers do not magically provide 100% lag free connections, they still offer the best possible experience in online multiplayer games. So these are the factors that have a big impact on your lag. Now let's have a look at the connections that the game establishes. The first and the second IP are servers hosted by i3D, where the second one is the actual game server. Inside the command line windows you can see the ping that I have to these servers, which we need later when we take a look at the results of the network lag test. The next two servers are from Ubisoft and the last one is from Amazon. These are most likely used for the backend of the game, so the login system, player stats and matchmaking. So these are the connections that you will see here mostly, but what you should also be aware of is that everyone can see your IP address when you enable the in-game voice over IP support. But while this is a privacy issue that must not exist in the game, the developers at least tell you that your IP address is made public when you use the in-game voice over IP feature. So at least they are transparent about that. And when you disable it, then no one can see your IP address, which is not the case for other games I tested, so that's at least something. So I know that many players think that using this kind of direct connection between clients for voice over IP should provide a lower latency than using a dedicated voice over IP server. And in theory they are right. But as my test showed, this is not the case in The Division. I measured a voice over IP delay of 1.4 seconds between two players who use the same internet service provider and have a ping of less than 5 milliseconds between them. So this voice over IP implementation does not only violate your privacy by revealing your IP address to other players, it also has a lot of lag. Now how about the update rates at which the client sends and receives data? When we look at the captured network data in Wireshark, then it appears that the division does not use a fixed rate at which data is sent and received, so that info does not help. However, what is interesting here is that the game does not use the UDP protocol for its communication with the game server, which real-time applications like games usually use since their data is time sensitive and losing a packet is much less of an issue than waiting for delayed packets. So instead of UDP, the division appears to use TCP, which is optimized for accurate delivery rather than timely delivery, and that means longer delays. But how long is the delay or network lag that we have in the division when both players have a ping of 25 milliseconds to the game server? For this test I used two PCs where each of them has its own fiber internet connection and a 144Hz gaming monitor. The game is running at more than 144 frames per second and without vSync. The last part of my equipment is a high speed camera that records at 400 frames per second, which allows me to very accurately measure the delay or lag that two players experience while playing on the same server. To measure the delay I have player 1 fire a shot and then I count the frames until player 2 sees that shot on his monitor. So after 40 tests the highest measured delay was 178 milliseconds. On average I measured 124 milliseconds and 82 milliseconds was the lowest measured delay. When we compare this to first person shooters then the lowest and average network lag is similar to what we get in Black Ops 3. And to be fair the division is not a twitch shooter. It's more like an RPG because you need quite a few bullets to kill an enemy who has the same level. But why do players complain about the lag in the division then when its network latency is not that bad? In this example here I had a ping of 27 milliseconds and the other player had a ping of 2 seconds. So the server should not allow that other player to hit me when I am behind cover. But it does and the reason for that is once again our good old friend the lag compensation. Now let me be clear. You absolutely need lag compensation in an online multiplayer game even when all players have a ping of less than 75 milliseconds. The problem is not that games have lag compensation. It's how much lag the developers allow it to compensate for. Even in a game that claims to be a RPG, the lag compensation must not allow this player with his 2 second ping to damage me. The server has to deny the hit. It also looks like the server will never disconnect you no matter how bad your internet connection is. I've tried latencies of up to 2 seconds as well as 50% packet loss and I was still able to stay in the game. That said it's not fun to play with such a bad connection. You are not immortal and you don't gain an advantage because every time you reload or do something else you have to wait for the server to acknowledge that you just did what you said you did. What we've seen in the last few years is the concerning trend to allow everyone to stay on the server and damage other players no matter how bad their internet connection is. That this has a very bad impact on the experience of players who have a decent connection is completely ignored by the vast majority of game developers 
And that's something that really has to stop. I know that many games have very few locations where they host their servers. And this means that many players do not even have access to low latency servers. And this is especially true on console and for games where the developers decide to use a cloud service to deploy their game servers. But at the end of the day you simply cannot allow the game to have players with a good connection suffer just because they play against someone who has a very bad connection. You can't sell your game worldwide without a strategy to provide servers in every region you want to sell it in. I hope that more players will finally become aware of this situation and start to demand a change because the best multiplayer game can be ruined by what I show you in my videos and it does not have to be as bad as it is. My plan is to continue to test games like Doom, Overwatch and the next Battlefield to show you how the developers handle those challenges. But as I said in the beginning of this video, these tests are very expensive and Patreon is currently the only way how I can cover the production costs. So if you would like to support me, then you can find the link to my Patreon site in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense. <laughs>